You know what, guys? Every once in a while, you just gotta build something that sucks. Need a Windows or Office key but don't want to pay retail? MMORC.com has all the best deals and a sweet discount for BPS Customs viewers. Just head over to the site linked below and enter code BAN35 for 35% off your order total, meaning you could snag Windows 10 Home for under 10 bucks. Fill out your email and place your order and then click the Extract Code button at the top of the page. From there, it's as easy as heading to your Windows activation settings and inputting your shiny new key. For more information, head to MMORC.com or check out the links below. I've struggled with the concept of this video for a little while now. And to be honest, it's gonna be a little goofy, a little wacky, a little different, probably a lot different. But just so that you guys know, or you probably knew already, we do PC builds here on this channel. So every week we do a different price point, a different performance target, a different form factor, and I try to mix it up quite a bit. So if you like that kind of stuff, make sure to get subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And thank you so much for tuning in to this one. So what are we doing here? Well, let me back up a little bit and say that your guys' support on a lot of my recent videos has been absolutely fantastic and I really appreciate that. But inevitably, whenever I do a PC video, there is gonna be somebody or a group of somebodies who will inevitably will comment and say that they're so sick of seeing the same components in the same configuration in the same case on every single tech channel. And, you know, to some extent, I get it. But one of the things that I've been preaching on this channel for years now is balance when it comes to PC builds. That means that your processor and your GPU are on relatively the same level. That means that your memory is set up so that it is not overkill for what you are trying to do with your system. It means that your power supply gives you the right amount of juice. It's that the case is the right form factor for the motherboard that you're using, etc. A lot of my contemporaries are of the same mindset. And that is very much the reason why it seems like a lot of tech channels are building the same PCs because these are really well-balanced, well-thought-out systems that use the same components because those are the components that go well together. However, every once in a while, I think it's important to revisit that concept and see why it's important to maintain balance. And like I said, I was struggling with this concept for a bit until I figured out that my angle on approaching this topic is just going to be to build the absolute most imbalanced, mismatched, weird PC that I could possibly think of. We're going to take this mismatch concept to the absolute extreme. And while this, of course, isn't necessarily going to replicate the experience of an end user putting together a system that is a little bit imbalanced, it will certainly magnify those issues and let us really dive into them and figure out why it's important to maintain that kind of balance. So to that end, I have a really bizarre collection of components on the desk here in front of me. And we're gonna start with the case because to be honest, after I put all these parts on this table, I kind of felt like building in this case is going to be doing it a disservice. This is the Inwin 925. Now, a couple years ago, they came out with the 928, which is a limited edition, $1,000 extreme chassis, much bigger than this. And it was basically designed to hold the Asus Dominus Extreme when that was first announced. It's a 14 by 14 motherboard, and it's, it's just enormous and crazy. This is a little more reasonable, I guess, a little more practical, but it's still huge. And it still holds an enormous amount of stuff. It's great for custom water cooling, which is not what we're gonna be doing here, unfortunately. But it has an all aluminum exterior. It's got the premium in-wind design. It's got really cool, quirky features, like these chunky bolts that they use to attach the side panels. It's got an etched in-wind logo on the side. It has radiator mounts at the top and on the side that just slide out completely to help you with the mounting of fans and radiators. And they even go so far as to use captive spring-loaded thumb screws on the rear panel so that you don't lose them. Now, when I say that I'm doing this case a disservice, I really mean that it definitely deserves better. 
And what I really want to do here on this channel is revisit this case at a later time, probably with some custom water cooling in mind, because that's what this is really designed for. That's what this really deserves. But Inwin did send this over to me, so thank you very much to them. Uh, so I wanted to get it, I guess, on camera for you guys, but I figured it was the perfect case to use in a build like this, where we are mismatching everything. So with the knowledge in mind that this is a huge case, let's use a very small motherboard. So this is the Asus RG Strix Z490 G Gaming Wi-Fi. This is micro ATX, and yes, we could have gone smaller to mini ITX and have it look absolutely ridiculous, but I wanted to keep some semblance of fairness in this build, and also I wanted four dim slots for a different kind of demonstration. So yes, 10900K it is. We used this before on the channel in a previous build, and to be honest, this is the only 10th generation processor that I still have in this office, but it's going to also serve a purpose here. We're using an extremely high-end gaming chip and we're going to be pairing it with a pretty cruddy graphics card. This is the MSI RX 560 Aero. Now, if you happen to be running this card, I mean, it's, I'm sure, fine for you, but it's not a powerhouse in any sense of the word. It does not even use any supplemental power. It draws all, if it's necessary, wattage from the PCIe slot. And, you know, 1080p gaming is even sometimes a challenge with this thing. So pairing it with the world's fastest gaming processor is definitely imbalanced. Now, I mentioned that I wanted four DIMM slots on our motherboard, and that's because we're not only going to be using four memory sticks, but we're going to be using four different brands and four different capacities of memory. So there is a Patriot 4 gig stick, an Aorus 8 gig stick, a Corsair 16 gig stick, and a G-Skill 32 gig stick. So not only are these four different brands, but they are four completely different DIMMs. And we're gonna see what happens when we put them all in the same system. Now, when it comes to cooling, I didn't wanna just cook our 10900K. So I wanted to give it some reasonable level of cooling. Normally I would recommend a 360 millimeter AIO with this processor so that you can get some decent overclocks, but we're going with a 240 here and likely this should be fine. I, I don't anticipate any problems using the Master Liquid ML240L from Cooler Master with our 10900K. It should work out okay. I think if we were really trying to push those overclocks or if we were really thinking about our system design, we would go with something a little bit beefier but we're gonna be adding to the two fans that come with the cooler by putting in five other different fans all around this system. So we've got a fan here from Silverstone, a fan from Enermax, a fan from Fractal Design, a fan from Be Quiet, and a fan from Inwin. So all in all, there's gonna be six different types of fans in this system. It's gonna look really bizarre. Some of them are RGB, some of them are not. Some of them use different control schemes. I'm gonna to have to figure all that out on the fly. And you know, it's just gonna to add to the mismatch craziness of this build. Powering everything, again, we're going with something that we would not normally use in a system like this, and that is a complete overkill power supply. This is the C1250 from Inwin. It is 80 plus, platinum rated, fully modular, 1,250 watts and way too much power for what we are doing here, and also way too much money. And I see this is the most common money leak in system builds, is power supplies. I understand wanting to be prepared for the future, and that may mean bumping up one level of power supply. So you go from a 650, and maybe you put in a 750 or something along those lines. But I see way too often people sending me a parts list that has a thousand watt power supply in it, and it makes little to no sense. You do not need that for what you are building, for what you are trying to accomplish. And that's one of the things that I wanted to try to address here. And then for storage, we're gonna do something really silly. And we are not using an SSD in this build. We are not using a regular hard drive. We are using a laptop hard drive, a 640 gig laptop hard drive. Let me tell you a story about this drive. I did not own this until a few months ago when my mom gave me her old laptop and said, please help it, it's dying. So I took her old hard drive out, this one, 
and I popped in an SSD and she thought that I had completely revamped the entire system because that's what SSDs do when compared to these kinds of hard drives. But we're gonna be running our Windows applications off of this hard drive in this system and it's going to be a nightmare and I can't believe that I'm gonna do it. But that is our mismatched build. We've basically got too much power. We've got an overkill CPU with a underkill GPU. We've got mismatched memory, both in speed and capacity. We've got mismatched fans, mismatched coloring on our fans, a small motherboard in a large case, and a cooler that is probably a little bit less than what I would recommend for this kind of heat load. So what's gonna happen? I don't know, and I, I'm pretty sure though that I'm gonna hate it, but this is in the name of science. So let's put this all together and then we could all cry about it later. All right, so we are all done and what a disaster this turned out to be, but a purposeful disaster with a reason for existing. Now, as I powered this on for the very first time and started loading into Windows, I remembered very quickly why I hated installing Windows onto hard drives. It took forever and I was sitting there and waiting and waiting and waiting and eventually I stopped waiting because I didn't want to waste my entire weekend installing Windows and then installing all the necessary games onto the system to make it work. So what I did was I unplugged that hard drive and I put in an M.2 that already had all this stuff preloaded just so that I can run some tests and demonstrate some stuff for you. But the first thing to remember is that SSDs are your friend and no modern system should really exist without one. It doesn't matter if you're building on a budget of $300, $400, get an SSD. That's that's lesson number one, and that's, that's pretty basic. So the very first thing that you probably notice here is that there was no sexy B-roll as you normally see with a build on this channel, and that's because this build isn't sexy. There is a lot about it that looks really ugly, and again, that's on purpose. But the biggest thing that stands out is the size mismatch. Now we used a micro ATX motherboard with a large case and a small graphics card. 
And as a result, we then have wires kind of running all over the interior because the motherboard isn't sized properly to take advantage of the wiring cutouts and normal routing positions that you would use on a case like this with a standard ATX or an extended ATX motherboard. So as a result, we have all the front panel wiring running from an opening all the way over and you see it very clearly, all the power wiring, the 24 pin, uh, your USB front panel stuff, it, it all looks really, really sloppy. And a lot of times when people either send me parts list or send me a picture of their PC to, to take a look at, I, I, this is what I see. This is a lot more common than probably people realize. And I think that the reason for that is when you go down in size to something like micro ATX, the parts are generally more affordable. So you could get more for your money. And if that's your goal, then I suppose that's fine. But the way I like to do things, again, is in a very balanced way. So if I'm gonna use a micro ATX board, I'm gonna use a micro ATX case, not just the case that I happen to have lying around that is enormous. So that's problem number one. There's no hidden wires. The GPU is dwarfed by the rest of this build and it just looks kind of ridiculous. That is also exacerbated by the fact that we do not have matching memory dims. Now, the reason that I put mismatched memory in here was not because I see that all the time with people buying different modules, but I wanted to see what happens when you have different speeds and if I can even enable any faster speeds from this memory. And the fact was that I couldn't, uh, either by doing it manually or just by clicking an XMP button Either way, if I changed any of the default memory settings, the system would not boot. Now that's not going to affect performance as drastically as it would on a Ryzen-based system, but still, that's not what you want. Now, again, you're not usually seeing people with four different DIMMs, but it's not uncommon to see somebody buy an 8 gig kit and then buy a different 8 gig kit to populate all four DIMM slots, and now you have two and two, and it's mismatched. So. This kind of demonstrates again why it's sometimes not great to do that. Yes, you do get the capacity, the memory is functioning, but it's not functioning as it should. And you might actually just be better off with a, a lesser capacity and higher speeds. The next thing that I was able to take a look at was power consumption. Now, we are still using a 10 core Intel processor, the 10900K, and we have a whole bunch of fans in the system and an AIO and four memory dims. And, even at 100% system load, that's with Far Cry 5 benchmarking and Cinebench running in the background. So the CPU was at 100%, the GPU was doing what it could. We were only consuming 325 watts or so from the wall. That's the entire system draw. Now, compare that to the power that is available from our power supply, 1250 watts, and we're not even scratching the surface of what it can do. So basically our, you know, $400-ish power supply, although sure, future compatibility, you're not gonna have to worry about adding things to your system, it ends up being a waste of money. So a lot of people will send me a system with a thousand watt power supply when they need a 500 or a 600 and there's just cash running out the door. So save yourself on this system $300, buy yourself a $100, 650 watt power supply and you'll be just fine. Did see some behavior while I was doing that full system stress test that I did not expect to see. Take a look here as we are running both Far Cry and Cinebench and our CPU temperature running stable at 73C all of a sudden drops off to 52. Now that might seem like a good thing or let the fans kicked up to 100% or something like that, but then I saw that the Cinebench result was about a thousand points lower than you would expect to see on a 10900K. Now, you can attribute certainly some of that to the fact that it's running the game, but you wouldn't necessarily expect to see a thousand points less. And the fact that the temperature dropped off leads me to believe that probably what happened was some of the cores were, were pinging off of a temperature limit. And as a result, the CPU downclocked itself to get to a more stable, better temperature. And that's where it stayed. It was like 52 degrees from there on out. So the cooler, as it turns out, I guess is really not sufficient to handle a 10900K, unfortunately. So that again is something that we talked about in the intro. You wanna have a cooler that matches your processor. And then to top it all off, our gaming performance was just 
pretty awful. The RX 560, not a very powerful GPU. And as a result, you know, we saw gaming frame rates in the mid 30s at 1080p, high settings, not even ultra settings. So yeah, not really a good match with our 10900K. And as you guys can probably see, I didn't fully button everything up. There's no back panel on it right now. And this rear fan holder, I didn't reinstall, which would have held these fans. And the reason for that was when I started testing everything, I was just kind of happy that we were getting the results that sh demonstrated exactly what I was talking about, but didn't feel the need to make this look great because it doesn't look great to begin with. Uh, and it doesn't really serve any additional purpose, but I think that this build, as uh, gross and cringy as it might be, is a good way to demonstrate some of the ways that I approach building a system and why it's important to stay balanced. And I hope that you guys were able to take something out of this too, because I mean, there's, there's a lot to take away from this. Uh, one, don't build anything that's quite this stupid because this is just a gross exaggeration of, of every problem you could you could have in a system, I guess. Um, but, you know, uh, otherwise, at least we're able to demonstrate some stuff that uh, maybe will help you guys out in the future. So if you like this video, fingers crossed, I guess, leave a like down below, uh, get subscribed, uh, all that good stuff. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.